Low target, our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for another work mode workout. And today was max effort deadlift day. Today was hard. Uh, by the way, for those of you who watch these videos, please, please, please click like down below. Otherwise, they only get like 20 likes. And I got like five losers who click dislike with their bot, giving me a couple hundred dislikes every time. If you guys watch these every day, please click like down below. I would be greatly appreciated to offset that. Thank you so much. All right, guys, I went down to the one-inch block today. Now, we pulled 600 real clean off the two-inch last time. Um, I didn't have the best day today, and I came in and went ahead and gave it 100%. I couldn't get in my groove. For some reason, this position just felt so awkward. Um, it just felt awkward. It felt difficult. I had to chalk my hands pretty hard early on. I was having a little bit of slipperiness, but I just didn't get enough chalk on. And it was just one of those where, if you guys watched this, this 575 was just like a ridiculous misgroove a little bit. Um, you know, it's just one of those days, but I came in and here's what we do. We do this and we give it 100% of everything that we have on a max effort lift. Okay, we, we come in and we give it 100%. Alright? And see, that was really sloppy. That was ugly. That was ugly. And I knew my hamstrings were weak, but I said, you know what? I'm going to come in and go over 600. I'm going to put 605 on. I'm going to pull this. I don't care. I don't care. Now, you guys saw me miss the lockout. Now, interestingly enough, I had decent speed off the bottom. I struggled to follow through. Um, I really struggled to follow through. And I know it's a hamstring weakness. And I've said that before. I'm starting to identify, uh, for me these days, hamstrings, hamstrings, triceps. These things need to be trained. And they need to be trained real hard. Um, and I came over and I'm like, you know what, I'm not going to accept failure. I'm going to give it another go. I'm going to chalk up, regain myself, and I'm going to come over and I'm going to grip this as hard as I can. And I'm going to pull. I'm going to pull as hard as I can. I'm going to try to get it one more time. And I couldn't. And this was strain, strain, and then it gave out. But I came over and kind of gave it my best effort. Now... We're dealing with stuff like this. People will say, "Well, what do you think? You think it was a technical issue? No, it was a weakness issue." Like guys have to quit making excuses for mixed lift. If I had just grooved it better, if I had just gotten tighter, no. If your if your weak ass had just been stronger, you would have got it. I need to get stronger. Now I've made pretty pretty dang good progress this year. We got to get stronger. More max work. More assistance work. So what I do today, I decided let me come in and do some just some deadlifts. Let's let's do a supplemental lift for this. Let's just switch back and forth and try to do some tens on deadlifts. I'm gonna to have to reduce the weight if I want to get multiple sets of ten. After missing a 605, doing reps with 405, this was actually harder. <laughs> this was actually harder. Like I felt like this killed my soul. I felt like this killed my soul. We're going to come back and do it again next time though, aren't we? We're going to get better at it. Let's build some more capacity on these lifts. Right? I've been doing conditioning. I've been doing volume training. Build that work. Now, we know we can only do so many sets of deadlifts. We have to go to good mornings at a certain point. I've preached that in the past. I know people are like, Jason, you're doing reps. I'm resetting it and switching hands. I'm completely turning loose of the bar. It's just 10 singles. It's 10 singles, especially with me swapping the grip each time. But I can tell you, this is, this was hard. Like normally, I wouldn't care, you know, 10 reps of 405, not a big deal. After missing, a, after missing that single, it was, I need to get up to being able to do three sets of 10, maybe four, then five. Let's get some volume in. And in fact, uh, I'm thinking of making some adjustments with my training a little bit. I think you guys will see, I want to try a phase of something a little bit different. Still obviously based on traditional conjugate, something I mentioned in the video. I think I'm going to mess with something that really sticks to the core of what the conjugate system is based on, uh, combined with what some other guys do, just for a phase. And if I don't like how it goes, I'll just go back to the normal template the way I'm doing it, which has been reasonably successful. But I've been running it a long time. I think conjugate is the way to train, but I think it gets some really, really interesting points right. And there's some fascinating components to it that I think that could be expounded on, at least for phases or as to other systems um, that I see other guys somewhat successfully implementing ideas of. 
But uh, I'll discuss that further. I'm going to experiment around and we'll see how it goes. Part of it's going to be, yeah, whatever my big lifts are like this, let's go back and do a close variation. Something that we can do some volume on. We can do volume on sumos. We can do volume on box squats. Volume on close grip bench. I wouldn't recommend you do this with conventional. Right? You can do this with conventional. You can do it with sumo if you're willing to reset and switch hands and stuff. But that was that was hard. Like that was actually harder for me than that miss six oh five was, even that lockout. There's just something that kills your soul about repping deadlifts. And it's like my whole T spine area, my upper chest, it's like I was just fighting for air. Like it hurts your actual lungs. So that's why we do conditioning work. You gotta get in shape. So what do we learn from that? My hamstrings. I've got to have more hamstring. We got to take them seriously. And I love doing my, my glute bridges and I'm going to keep them in as an exercise. They're nice. They're great. They're awesome. I got to have more hamstring for my deadlift. Now people say, Jason, you got big hamstrings. Well, clearly they're not strong enough. Not strong enough. Five by ten good mornings. Somewhat hamstring dominant. People ask me on that, how did different good mornings work things? Well, the wider your stance goes, the more hamstring is involved. All right, nice wide stance like that's good hamstring dominant. Obviously still works the erectors, T-spine, everything else. But we get less back and more posterior chain by doing it this way, All right? Still getting back work in there. And believe me, five sets of ten with this, your, your, your back is getting worked. Making sure we get deeper in those hamstrings. And getting into those hamstrings the way that we want for that sumo deadlift. That wider stance matters. Matters. You gotta bring those hammies up. And I did five sets of glued ham raises. And doing them even with body weight, even on an easier setting, is tough. When your hamstrings are fatigued and you weigh what I weigh, they're not easy. I found them challenging, so I need to get a lot stronger at glued ham raises. I'll venture to say that, yes, the good mornings matter. The good mornings are a good general exercise for both my squat and my deadlift. They're a mainstay. They're one of these exercises that I have found throughout my entire life. When I do them, I get stronger at squats and pulls. And when I cut them out, anyone convinces me to cut them out, I get weaker. Every single time. And I've been convinced of it multiple times. And it's been 100%. When I add them back in, I get stronger. I think just for me, the good morning is an exercise I could never really afford to take out. They just seem to give me so much, even with lightweight. I get so much out of them. But five sets of ten on this today, using the wider stance. Uh, even 185, you know, as a supplemental lift after they're challenging. I know some of you do more weight, and that's okay. This is what I work with right now for this stance. I'll get stronger at them. Hey, I probably need to get up to 225 for five sets of 10. We'll get there. But I'm getting a good amount of work there with them on this, and we'll work on increasing it. All right, they're going to be an important lift. I need to progress. Uh, in fact, it'll improve my lifts if I do. But I can't do so at the expense of losing what I'm getting out of. Also, someone said, why don't you go completely super low? Well, because of my wider stance. I'm going basically till my hamstrings stretch. I take these down until I get a stretch reflex in the hamstrings. Just like when you do a Romanian deadlift. Think about it. If you look at it, it's really basically a neck-loaded Romanian deadlift is what it is. The way I'm doing them. Right? Basically what it is. Uh, but I don't want to start cutting range of motion further. And I don't feel I need to do them off pins right now. Could I eventually start doing them off pins? Sure. Will I? Possibly. Yes. We want to do variations. All right. This is a good variation to work with. Need to get stronger at it, and then I'll adjust it. Now, glute ham raises, after having done all that, these are tough. And the first couple sets were a little sloppy. I really focused on getting that, that better uh, contraction at the top on the last two sets as I got into the groove of them. But even this was challenging. And the last two sets, I really felt in my hammies. And I took the last set out to 12. Um, just to finish those hamstrings and work them in a way that nothing else does. Uh, because the glute ham raise does hit the hamstrings differently. This is if you're really worried about tearing a hamstring. If you're really worried about tearing a hamstring on, on different exercises or movements or on a playing field, the glute ham raise is phenomenal. And people are like, why don't you go further down for the back extension because I don't care. This is a hamstring exercise for me. Now, are there different ways to do the glute ham raise? Yes. 
I'm doing them for my hamstrings. I'm not doing them to get extra low back work in. I get plenty of low back work. I just did 5 by 10 good mornings. This is purely to destroy and finish off my hamstrings and to work them in a way I'm not working on other stuff. I need to get stronger at them. Back eventually, maybe I'll start doing them with bands, right? We'll get to maybe a slightly harder setting, get enough of body weight, then we'll start adding bands. And that'll give me that, that peak power I need. Because that's what will help me follow through with the deadlift. Look at what's happening with the glute ham raise. And look at where I missed that deadlift. You know how rare it is to miss a sumo at the top? To not be able to lock it? That is purely hamstring. Okay, that is purely hamstring preventing that. Especially when you can pop it off the floor. Usually we miss we miss sumos off the floor or right right immediately off the floor from that position of pulling from. We got past the knee before I ran into trouble. That's hamstring. This exercise will fix it. So we don't make excuses. We don't stand there and say, oh, if I had just got if I had just done X, no, if I had just been stronger, I would have locked that. If my hamstrings had been stronger. So we fix it start doing some banded some banded deadlifts do more of these glued ham raises all right get my hamstring stronger that's the solution and that's only going to happen by work and this is the two two of the best exercises I have or what you just saw me do we find our weak links on the maxes and we destroy them we destroy them that's how we make this work that's work mode baby Alright guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.